Um, it don't mean a lot. That's something I have to uh, brag on uh, with my friends. <laughs> brag about. How good do you think Memphis could be next year? Uh, you know, you know, just going to get you uh, They should be great, you know, when they coach Cal, the way he prepares people um, for games and stuff like that. And then practice, how it's take practice. They the should be all right. Derek, you're talking about the ground. You're to take the phone calls. It's pretty crazy. So, so in all honesty, if you could be anywhere else right now, we about what it would mean to be drafted number one. Talking about right now? Benefit. You mean like we're like... Yeah, anyway. You mean like we're like... <laughs> I don't understand like... To get away from this. I'll get away. Right um, I'd like to go back to Chicago really. Uh, yes, Do like anything to. in particular? Um, no, I'm not really just hanging out with my friends. Do you keep an ear and stay tuned to like what draft, you know, trades could happen and things like that? No, I rarely watch TV and the people that call me, they talk about um, like regular stuff, like what I'm doing and stuff like that. They don't really talk about the draft. Have you always dreamed of just shaking David Stern's hand and just getting picked and playing in the NBA league? Yeah, so I really um, dreamed about it um, like a few nights ago when I was a kid and I used to think about it. And it really started happening. Um, when I was in, like, um, in college, when I used to go on the road, and like, um, like just daydreaming, looking out the window, and just saying nothing, you start daydreaming, I'm just thinking about um, just shaking his hand and seeing my mother, seeing my family, and then just moving from afterwards. And how does all this media hype feel? I mean, all the cameras in their face, and all the, the hype of the draft, I mean, how do you, how do you respond to it? Um, it's, I'm, I'm happy that um, you all are doing this because I have to get used to it sometimes. Um, it comes in the territory. If I want to be in the top pick, one of the top picks, um, it comes with it. So I'm just happy that this is going on right now. Darren, I want to thank everybody else in this room is kind of wondering where the heck they're going. Now, you pretty much, they say it's a two man draft. So you pretty much know what's this like for you going in the day ahead or the day before? Um, I'm in like a win win situation. Um, both teams are great, and I feel they're good in both teams. And um, no matter who picks me, my whole goal is to play in the NBA. So that that's what I'll be doing. Do you think having a coach that has had both NBA experience and obviously the college experience, it helps help you kind of prepare you for this for that step? Of course, the way he prepared me um, for that year, it was unbelievable. And like he was used to coaching his way, and that's the NBA way. So I think that he prepared me and my other teammates for it. Derek, what would you say? Besides himself, he's the second best point guard in history. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's not include you. You're the man. Yeah, wow. You're going, you're, no, you're going number one, and they're picking number two. Wow. Well, not, the num no matter who picks who, just who is the second best point guard? Man, I can't say no name. Man. I, I really don't know. <laughs> Like everybody's special in this draft. Like this is a deep draft, kind of, and like I really don't know who. Uh, I swear. All right, let me put a name in your mouth. Talk about OJ Mayo. What do you think? He's got ahead of him. There's a lot of people to put him two through six. Oh, um, OJ had OJ had um, a good game. He had a pro game ever since he was in high school, from now eighth grade or something like that. So of course he's going to be great on the next level because he's used to everything. Derek, tell us about your goals for your for your rookie season. Anything that you want to accomplish in particular? You know, I'm just thinking about all the craziest stuff. I, I just throw goals out there that um, that seem unbelievable, but if I achieve them, they're there, like, um, why not? Why can't be MVP of the league, rookie of the year, all that stuff? Because one day I know that if you think about it um, a lot and work hard enough that it can come true. Where do you see yourself uh, five years down the road? What kind of NBA player are you going to be? Hopefully um, not a star, but like a superstar or something, some, some around um, like a Chris Paul, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, KG, Paul Pierce, something like that. Hopefully my name get mentioned in it. What do you need to do to get to that level? What are you lacking right now that those guys might have already? Dedication, that's what you need, dedication and sacrificing a lot of stuff and just a great work ethic because I think that's what separates a lot of players from other players because of their work ethic. Chris Douglas Roberts, has been seems like he's slipping a little bit in the draft. I mean, that's 
he had an unbelievable season. I mean, it's a huge part of what you guys did. Does that surprise you at all? Like, what do you think teams are missing out on with, with CDR? Um, I really didn't even know about it until you said it and a couple of other people said it. But um, he's a great player. player. Um, they probably don't see the way that he, he um, they say conventional basketball with pick and rolls and all that stuff. But the way Memphis played, where like he really don't do pick and rolls like that. His his thing is a one on one type game, and um, just going by by his guy. But they say he has an orthodox game, but he really does. But he can still play basketball. That's the whole thing. Where do I get to watch like that? <laughs> I don't know, I just woke up and was at my door. <laughs>